The Yakima people say if you look closely at Mount Adams, you can make out the shape of a horse. Their legends say the creator put horses here to help the Yakima people. And should they ever become lost, the horse will always lead the people home. Today, the Yakima and their wild horses walk different paths. Every five years, they double in size. We have over 12,000 horses on our reservation. It must be down in the bottom somewhere. It's hard to explain how the herds of the Yakima can vanish into the vast desert and sage that is the Yakima Reservation. As quietly as they fade away, they emerge. The herds are on the run in a place where only they can survive. The, the little Mustangs can go through that scab rock and won't lose a hair. You take a domestic through there, you're probably going to break all four legs in, 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 in 10 yards. They are descendants of original Spanish herds, escapees from farms and ranches, and unwanted horses dumped in the desert. Uh, these little guys are born and raised up here. They're, they're tougher than horseshoe nails. Ed Gunyer Jr. knows these horses well. He's been capturing them for most of his life. There's horse chasers and there's horse catchers. I'm a horse catcher. <laughs> I've, I've caught my share and then some. Some horses Gunyer sold to ranches, but most went to processing plants and onto dinner plates and dog dishes in Europe and Asia. They'd be handled just like beef and sheep and pigs, you know, and, and the markets there. Yeah, they've never been raised for food, so there's been no selective breeding of horses. So they have this innate flight panic drive that the cows, pigs that have been raised for thousands of years for slaughter don't have. The Humane Society and other groups have led a successful drive to restrict meat processing of wild horses in the U.S. The protection extends across the West. This is the trip wire and then the weight up here. With no buyers for wild horses. Rock drops and the, the gate closes. Gunyer and other tribal members. The only plant we've got in Canada and Mexico. Have abandoned their traps. Wild horses are flourishing. If we don't do anything, those numbers are going to grow and grow and grow. I love horses, but they got to be managed. A lot of these animals are going to starve to death. Because uh, there's nothing left to eat up here. Look at this. There's no feed out there for, to feed all of these animals. Tribal leaders say the horses are becoming victims of their own success. There's, there's nothing left to eat. The horse herds have cut thousands of these trails through the desert. You can still see their footprints in the dust. But what you don't see is very much food for them or anything else to eat. Down here, you used to see a lot of deer, a lot of deer. Tribal wildlife officials are considering drastic action. It's just in euthanizing the horses. You know, that, that was our last resort, and I think we're, we're pretty close to that, that last option. Horse protection groups say there are better ways. Contraceptives, uh, drugs, or gelding, um, but to not round them up, not to send them to slaughter. I don't think they have any clue or idea how, how much damage that 12,000 horses can do to a small parcel of land. The Yakima say they've tried everything, everything they can think of. We've even sold horses for a dollar, and nobody wants them. The Yakima and their horse herds are left to work this out among themselves, to find a way to live with each other, to find their way home. On the Yakima Reservation with photojournalist Doug Burgess, Gary Chittam, King 5 News.